Good evening, everyone. I pray everybody had a blessed and wonderful day today. Father God, I thank you, Lord God, for today. Father God, I pray, Lord God, for your people, Lord God. Father God, I pray your blessings over them, Lord God. And God, I pray, Lord God, that the lesson, Lord God, that I'm about to uh, share with them, Father God, that they get something from it, Lord God. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Uh, tonight, you, you, you do. I want to talk about uh, roadblocks. Amen. And the scripture I'm going to come from tonight is 2 Corinthians chapter 10. And I'm going to read verses 1 through 5 from the New Living Translation. And it reads, Now I, Paul, appeal to you with the gentleness and kindness of Christ. Though I realize you think I am timid in person and bold only when I write from far away. Well, I'm begging you now so that when I come, you don't have, you won't have to be, so that I won't have to be bold with you, with those who think we act from human motives. We are human, but we don't wage war as humans do. We use God's mighty weapons, not worldly weapons, to knock down the strongholds of human reasoning and to destroy false arguments. We destroy every proud obstacle that keeps people from knowing God. We capture their rebellious thoughts and teach them to obey Christ. Every Friday we have a staff meeting and the superintendent or the person who's conducting the meeting will ask us a question. And last Friday, the question, what happens when what gets in the way becomes the way? And my thought was maybe whatever's blocking you, you just accept it and you adjust your life to it. And it got me thinking about how we allow things to take us off track. So I did some research on the internet and I'm gonna share with you guys what I found. Satan has set up spiritual roadblocks to detour and distract us. We will encounter many roadblocks and sometimes at important phases in our lives. That's why we need to make the decision to follow God. The Apostle John knew that a spiritual journey wouldn't be easy. It was him that said, the love for this world hinders our spiritual life. Do you love this world and the things of it? Roadblocks definitely hinder our progression in Christ. So let's look at a few things that could cause us to detour. The first one is you just don't have a spiritual hunger. When you don't hunger and thirst after righteousness, that means you're content. When you're content, that means you're satisfied with how life is going for you. So are you content in your marriage? Are you content on your job? Are you content with your friends? We all know what it is like to have, have poor eating habits. An unhealthy diet produces unhealthy cravings. Rather than crave what makes us feel better, think better, look better, we crave things that do just the opposite. We crave what we consume, and we consume what we crave. 
our habits either increase our hunger for God or increase our hunger for worldly things. The longer you go without spiritual nourishment, the less hungry you'll be for it. And without realizing it, you can go into spiritual starvation. Hearing the word of God increases our desires for righteousness. Hearing is the way God applies his word with power to our hungry and thirsty souls. The next roadblock is the very popular unforgiveness. We are well aware of the hurts we've experienced. And we believe the offenders should suffer some consequences for what they did to us. We may feel like if we forgive them, they're getting off easy. And if we let them have it, and we let them have it because we need them to understand, don't play with me. Trust is taken away from the person who hurt you. Forgiving others is one of the hardest things for us to do. God knows how difficult forgiving others can be. Life offers us plenty of opportunities not to forgive others. Unforgiveness puts us in the hands of our tormentors, which are demonic spirits. Those people start controlling your mood and they never put you in a good mood. The lack of forgiveness does more damage to us than whatever the person that hurt you caused. When we don't forgive, our hearts are hardened. We start not trusting others, and eventually, if we hold on to that unforgiveness, it turns into bitterness. That's when we become vengeful. Those negative feelings war against the love and compassion that we as Christians should be walking in. God forgave a debt that we could never repay. And if we don't forgive, you leave God no choice than not to forgive you. Forgiveness will free us to live in peace. So let's put the past behind us and let God pay back whoever needs it. The next roadblock I wanna talk about is strongholds. Strongholds are incorrect thinking. One example of a stronghold is someone who may have, you may have trusted, who was maybe like a father figure in your life and that person betrayed your trust and hurt you, because of that mistrust, the enemy lied to you and told you no one could be trusted. And you then took on the mindset, you gotta take care of yourself and you become overly independent. And because you feel that way, now you struggle with even trusting God. Mistrust is one stronghold, but what area in your life does the devil have a foothold in? Is it your sex life? Are you lusting behind people you shouldn't be? Can you control your temper? Do you enjoy letting people have it? Ask yourself, why do I feel the need to go off all the time? If you do the research, you'll find it's because of a past hurt. There, there may have been people to say hurtful things to you in the past, and now you're not going to let anyone else cross you. When ridding yourself of strongholds, you have to understand the root cause and how it started. Everything in you may want to keep your secret, but the Bible tells us to confess our sins. Satan loves secrets. 
So if you want to hold on to lying, stealing, cheating, drinking, abusing your spouse mentally or physically, then go right on. Satan loves you. But if you're tired of living that secret life, pray and ask God to help you stop doing those things. So with that being said, the next roadblock I want to talk about is unconfessed sins. Whatever we keep hidden will stay hidden until we bring it to the light or God himself shines a light on your sin. Like I said earlier, any unexposed sin in your life, Satan will establish a stronghold. So you must confess any and all sins you have committed and repent of it. That means you have to stop doing it. And when you pray, be specific. Lay out all the raw details that you thought and said that led you to fall. The next roadblock is soul ties. Having a soul tie with somebody means your soul is joined with theirs. Being joined to another person with an unclean soul tie can allow the transference of spirits and bondage between the people. It is vital to break all bad soul ties from unhealthy past relationships so that the enemy can't use them against you. The beginning of any ungodly soul tie is when we desire the approval or affection of someone over our desires for God. Ungodly soul ties can be formed through sex before marriage, adultery, and false teachings. Things you can do to break ungodly soul ties is first admit that you have one, then cut all communications with that person. Then pray and ask God to help you not to desire that relationship ever again. And the last roadblock I want to talk about is a lack of faith. Not understanding or believing God's will or the truth about your situation can keep you in bondage. The scriptures say without faith, it is impossible to please God. Faith is the total confidence. It, it's a belief that is grounded in trusting God. The struggle with faith enters the picture when we try to balance truths with what we see and truths that we can't see. But the main reason we struggle with a lack of faith is because we simply don't truly know the one true and living God. We say we do. Pastor has been talking about religion or relationship and if and if yours if you're in a relationship with someone, you're intimate with them and you are more than likely to trust them. So if you lack faith, then that means you really don't trust God to take care of you. If that's the cause, then the way to solve that problem is to spend more time in God's word so you can get to know him better. He already knows you well. You have to let down your guard and let him in. In my conclusion, let us repent of our hindrances and turn back to Christ. Allow the Holy Spirit to penetrate us so that our hindrances can be identified and dealt with. Amen.